Hello everyone, and welcome to DevWave Diaries. If you're ready to level up your web design skills, you've come to the perfect place. In today's video, I am going to show you how to create this sliding button animation to create visually stunning, interactive designs. Let's get into it. First, let's add Font Awesome CDN to our project. Head over to the CDN.js website to get the Font Awesome CDN link. I'll provide the link to this website in the video description. Once you're there, copy the first CDN link tag and paste it right after your regular CSS link tag in the HTML file. Now let's start by creating a div with the class name container. Inside this div, add an anchor tag with the ID BTN. Within the anchor tag, write the text swipe next. Then, create a span tag inside the anchor tag for additional content. Next, visit the Font Awesome website. I'll include the link to this site in the video description. Once there, search for arrow and select the first arrow icon that appears. Click on the i tag to copy the HTML code and paste it inside the span tag you created earlier. Now, let's close the previous browser tabs because we don't need them anymore. This is the only HTML code we need for this animation. Now, let's move on to the CSS. First, let's add the CSS boilerplate. Set the margin to 0 and the padding to 0 to eliminate any default spacing around elements. Next, use box sizing, border box to ensure that the width and height of elements include padding and borders. Finally, apply a font family of sans serif to give the text a modern and clean appearance. Next, let's add styles to the HTML and body elements. Set the width to 100% and the height to 100% to ensure they cover the entire viewport. Also, set the background color to hash 000 for a solid black background. Now, let's style the container div. Set its width to 100% and height to 100vh to make it fill the entire viewport height. Use display, flex to enable flexbox layout, and then set justify content, center and align items, center to center its contents both horizontally and vertically. Next, let's style the anchor tag using the id hash btn selector. Set its position to relative so that we can position any child elements relative to it later. We'll give it a width of 13 rem and a height of 4.2 rem to create a button-like shape. To achieve rounded corners, set a border radius of 50 pixel, which will make the button look smooth and appealing. Finally, apply a background color of hash 111 for a dark gray shade that contrasts nicely with the black background. Now, open the browser, and you should see a button-like structure positioned in the middle of the page. After that, let's add more styles to the anchor tag. Set the color to hashy 9 d one d one for a light pink hue. Use display, flex to make it a flex container, and set justify content, center and align items, center to center the text within the button. Set the font size to 1.1 rem for better readability, and remove the underline by setting text decoration to none. Increase the spacing between letters by setting letter spacing to 2 pixel, and finally, add a top border of 2 pixel solid hash 6f59 for a subtle highlight. Now, copy and paste this line, but change border top to border left to add same border to the left of the button. Now, open the browser, and you should see the button-like structure with the updated styles. Next, let's comment the span tag from our HTML code. This will help us focus on understanding the code more clearly. Now, let's add padding left, 40 pixel and transition, 0.5 second to the anchor tag. The padding will create space on the left side of the button, while the transition will smooth out any changes to the button's properties over half a second. Next, let's add styles for when the anchor tag is hovered. Set padding left to 0 pixel and padding right to 40 pixel. Also, change the color to hash FFF to make the text white when the button is hovered over. Now, open the browser and hover over the button. You should see the text moving from right to left and the color change to white. Now, let's uncomment the span tag that we previously commented. Next, let's style the span tag. Set its position to absolute so we can place it precisely within the button. Set left, 5 pixel. Set the width 3 rem and height of 3 rem. Add a circular shape, by using border radius, 50%. We'll set the background color to hash 04f34d, giving it a bright green look that stands out. 
Finally, applying display, flex, along with justify content, center and align items, center, will allow us to center any content within the span, making it look neat and organized. Open the browser, and you should see the green span position to the left side of the button. Next, add a transition, 0.5 second to the span tag. This will create a smooth transition effect for any changes. Now, let's style the icon inside the span tag. Set its color to black with color, black and increase its size by setting font size, 1.5 rem. Now, you should clearly see the arrow icon inside the span. Next, let's style the span so that it moves to the right side of the button when hovered. To do this, set left to calc, 100% minus. 3 rem minus 5 pixel. Here 100% represents the full width of the button. Then, we subtract 3 rem, which is the width of the span itself, so it stays fully within the button. Finally, we subtract 5 pixel, which matches the initial left offset and keeps it aligned with the button edges. This way, on hover, the span smoothly slides from the left to the right side of the button. Now, let's add an after pseudo element to the anchor tag. Set its content to an empty string, so it doesn't display any text. Set position to absolute to position it within the anchor tag. Give it a width of 80 pixel and a height of 100% to span the full height of the button. Finally, set the background color to hash 6F40, which gives it a semi-transparent white overlay. Open the browser, and you should see a transparent white box positioned in the middle of the button. Next, add transform, translate x, minus 5 rem, to the after pseudo element of the anchor tag. After that, open the browser, go to the inspect tab, and select the after pseudo element in the anchor tag. In the styles panel, find the transform, translate x, minus 5 rem, property, and use the down arrow key to adjust its value. This way, you can find the best position for the effect, for example, here, a value of minus 11 rem works well. Now, let's change the value to minus 11 rem. After that, add skew x, 30 degrees. This will tilt the after pseudo element by 30 degrees. Next, add transition, 0.75 second ease in out to create a smooth animation effect, and set z index, 1 to make sure the pseudo element appears above other elements as needed. Now, let's add a hover effect to the after pseudo element by using the hash btn hover after selector. Copy the transform, translate x line from the original after pseudo element styles, paste it here, and change the minus 11 rem value to 11 rem. This will create a smooth sliding effect for the pseudo element when the button is hovered over. Next, simply add overflow, hidden inside the hash btn selector. This will ensure that any content or effects extending beyond the button's boundaries are hidden, keeping the design clean. Now, open the browser and hover over the button. You should see the green circle move to the right side first, followed by a shining effect on the button, creating an amazing shining button animation. If you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to stay updated with all our latest content. Your support helps us create more exciting and valuable videos. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode of DevWave Diaries.